All right, so I built this giant robot for the movie Bad Seeds, Reap What You Sow. It's this big old spider robot. And then we wanted to have a whole bunch of these big spider robots because there's a scene in the movie where Powell, the lead actor, walks into a room and he's got his rifle with a light on and it's in the future, it's like a sci-fi, and he's panning his light all around and you see all these robot spiders everywhere, all over the room. And uh, the, his brother, Chet's outside of the room and he's playing around with the remote control that he knows darn right, right well it goes to those spiders. And he's like, eh, why not? And he turns it on and all the spiders light up at one time in concert. So Powell's in there, he's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, Chet, Chet, there's a problem. And Chet's like, oh, my bad. <laughs> he just turns it back off. But we wanted that to be real. We don't want a bunch of CGI spiders. We wanted, you know, the real looking spiders, you know? So it took me like a year to design and develop this spider to the point where you can actually pose it, you know, the arms move, the articulate, and the head actually pivots around and stuff like that. So it took like a year and I was like, well, there's no way I could reproduce all these, but what about modelers, you know, people that like to build them? So I approached a guy that, that does this. He builds RC helicopters, planes, drones, you name it. And he's an aircraft mechanic. You know, he's an accomplished builder. So I was like, come on, Kenny, what do you, what do you say, man? Can you build one? So he's like, he said, give me the G codes. And he, and he built one and he sent me all the pictures of it, which I'm showing you now. They're probably in a little box right over here. Thanks, Kenny. You rock. So anyway, he proved that, uh, you know, an RC builder, you know, somebody like that with a 3d printer could build them. And then I thought, if they built all of these, you know, p random people will give them the G codes for free, you know, whatever. And they could bring them with them, come down for the shoot and everybody's robot would be in the shoot and you would have a screen used robot and you would get to keep the robot, of course. And, and it'd be cool. You know, and we'd all have a blast, you know, changing recipes and whatever, play with these things. This is, this is my, my thinking. So anyway, and then I started to really think about it. I was like, do you realize how big these things are? These things take like a footprint is like four feet in every direction. And then you would want like a staircase of them, you know, sort of on display. Like this is the laboratory where they were built. And I was like, mm, this isn't going to work. So I was like, what about scaling them down? They're still pretty creepy. So I came up with this little one that I built the other day. I put it together in one day, took two days to print it and completely assemble it. And uh, I named him Jaime. I took him outside, the sun was setting, and I put my truck there just to get perspective of how big he was as if he was, you know, underneath the car or whatever, and the light coming through it was kind of goldeny, and it was cold, and, and I was in the shadows, so that was kind of blue, and, you know, he was a silver color because I painted him with chrome, you know, aerosol spray, and I was just like angel's trumpet saying when I put this little bastard on the ground, I was just like, ah! <laughs> I can't take credit for how cool it looks. That's the God's honest truth. I really, I, I have nothing to do and it. it just, it came out great. So anyway, there's the, there's the pictures, but Jaime actually is a pretty cool looking robot. So I put it up and just for the heck of it, you know, I just, you know, put it on Facebook and I was like, anybody want the G codes for this little rascal? Boom. I get hit up immediately with people that want the G codes and people are calling, you know, people that actually know me are calling, Hey man, can I get the G codes for that? I was like, I didn't realize you know, so many people had 3D printers and water them. So, of course, I sent them the first batch of codes I sent out were wrong because I sized everything wrong because I built two different versions. And I'm sure all those numbers that are in there are really important to somebody, but they just weren't important to me. <laughs> so, anyway, so I, fi I fixed a lot of it. And I made a little stand. I'll go in. I'll get into the build in just a second. You know, I made a little stand for him and everything. Um uh, all right, let, let's get in, let's get into the build. What the heck? So I figured if every, everybody's going to build these, I had to tape mine to a cardboard box, you know, to start building it. You know, to, you got to start somewhere to put the legs on it. You got to glue them on, right? I use hot glue for everything. And uh, I recommend spraying them with, um, um, kills, uh, but don't spray any of the build areas, anywhere that you're going to put glue, put tape inside there. If, if it's a concave hole or anywhere you're going to marry two pieces together that you're going to glue it, put tape on those. Because, I mean, you know, you want the you want the bond to be on there, not on the paint. Okay. So um, if you do have them all done in kills and you've got the whole thing all built and you have seams everywhere where they're joined together, you can take um, the uh, squeeze tube, um, the bathroom caulking that you would use in a bathroom, you know, around a sink or something. It works great. You can take water and smooth it all in. So anyway, anywhere that you want to make holes in one of these things, never use a drill. The best way to make holes in 3D prints, as far as I'm concerned, is you take a little torch and take an awl, a scribe, you know, something that's pointing, a Phillips head screwdriver, and just grind the end off, you know, a little one. Heat it up with the torch until it's nice and hot, and you just poke it in there, give it a little twist, and pull it back out, and it makes a little grommet, a hole all the way through, because they're, they're basically honeycomb, and it makes it so it won't compress in that area. It's just... Just the way to do it. So if you wanted to put pins in these, you could break up some toothpicks, put a hole in each side, put some, you know, glue in there and pin them together. 
But the little stand that I made, you know, it'll, it, it, I recommend six inches high. Make the stand six inches high when you assemble it and start from there. Put two legs like oars on both sides so that you get, you know, those are in the right position. And at that point, you could make a front one, you know, like he's walking this way and one that's extended behind as if it's in the middle of a step. You know, whatever you want to do. Okay, as far as the head is concerned and the column, I did those with PVC as, as well as the little pipe that goes to the, uh, to the stand. Uh, I use PVC for that, so the build is extremely cheap and easy to do. I think it's three, three fourths, three quarter um, PVC, whatever. I mean, there's only so many sizes, so you know one of them's going to fit. So anyway, I made the, the circumference inside there a little loose, so when you put these pieces together, it's going to be you know kind of wobbly. Wrap that with a little bit of duct tape, so when you shove it down in there, you get a nice fit, and that way you can uh, you know angle the head into any position that you want. So, and, and with these, you don't have to do a lot of sanding or any real prep, you know, get them primed decent and do, you know, do a decent cleanup on them. And, uh, I used a uh, duplicolor. I'm not here to endorse any products, but I love the duplicolor fake Chrome. That is just perfect, perfect stuff. So anyway, use that. And, uh, I did the, the globe in the front, all the globes on these things that the little seeing eye that all the robots have, they're gloss black. That's some kind of radar receiver, infrared, really cool Klaus von Templet <laughs> technology in the movie. So anyway, all of them have this little ball in the front. So that little ball has to, you know, be gloss black. But if you wanted to do it in a camo color or something like that, the camo tan is really cool. So anyway, that's, that's my help on the build video. So if you've got a, um, uh, one of these little Jaime's, you know, that's, uh, that's my design and, uh, they will wind up in the movie. We are going to make a see of these little things and then we'll CGI the little running, you know, when they run around, but when they go through the room and everything comes on, it's probably gonna be these little Jaime's. So anyway, that's, that's the Jaime build. So anyway, enjoy guys. Thanks. And the movie is bad seeds reap what you sow. Thanks for watching.